Turn to page number 127. Page number 127. Let's stand and sing. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. 127. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. To take him at his word. Just to rest upon his promise. Just to know the Seth. Father, we thank you tonight for your blessings. We thank you for the privilege again it is to be in your house this evening. And uh, Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for your uh, the beautiful day you've given us. And Lord, the great uh, uh, spirit that was in the service this morning, the great attendance that was there. And Lord, we just pray tonight, Lord, that we look to you again, uh, Lord, as we uh, uh, sing uh, the, the songs that have, you've given to the writers of old to sing, to write for us so that we can sing, uh, Lord, filled, Lord, with truth from the word of God. And then... Uh, Lord, for a message from the Word of God that would speak and, and stir our hearts, Lord, to serve you, honor you, uh, Lord, for uh, uh, the rest of our days, Lord, that we would, uh, would seek, Lord, to uh, have that personal, intimate relationship with you. Pray, Father, for those who are unable to be here uh, due to illness, those that are uh, unable to be here because of traveling, that you give them mercies and grace. And then, Lord, uh, that your will uh, would be done in the hearts and lives of those who are cold and indifferent. We ask all this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Appreciate you being here this evening. It's a great blessing to have all of you. And uh, I'll tell you, it's that summer. I, I, I announced uh, uh, on Wednesday night that uh, we're going to uh, uh, just keep it going. Just keep it going. Uh, just keep growing during the during the uh, summer year, summertime. It is possible. It is possible. And uh, we, but we've got to be faithful, and we've got to be diligent to be there. And I, I realize sometimes you get out there. If, if you're going to cut the grass, don't do it on Sunday. Amen. If you're going to cut the grass, don't do it on Wednesday. You say, "Well, that's my only time to do it." Well, number one, you shouldn't be doing it on Sunday to begin with. Just that, just saying, you know, that's that's not the, that's not the cutting grass day. That's the the rest day. That's the worship of the Lord day, and uh, and. Then you don't have an excuse if you cut the grass between Sunday morning church and Sunday night church. Well, I was just too hot. Well, it's southeast Texas. Wake up. You don't cut the heat, grass in the heat of the day anyway. And so, uh, you know, after 14 years of lawn care, I think I know something and learned something. So, uh, anyway, uh, but, and on Wednesday, don't do it on Wednesday because you're going to get overheated. And you're like, oh, I'm just going to feel good. Now, if I could sit in an auditorium in mortal pain with a spider bite. You could be in church Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. Quit playing your fiddles. Quit playing your fiddles. All right? Now, you can do this. Now, we're going to keep growing, 
through the summer. We're not going to slack off, okay? If you have to take a vacation, take a vacation Monday through Saturday. Be back in church on Sunday. You know, if you have to be out, you know, uh, on a Sunday, then leave your tithe. Don't just go off and, and expect, expect me to pay these light bills. I see you out there fanning, you know. But if you, if you know, we have to have, we have to be able to pay them. Uh, so anyway, this is Southeast Texas. Not, most of you are equipped in that and know all about it. So uh, it's coming. And we, in fact, we have been blessed. We went the entire month of May without a 90-degree temperature. Now, that's amazing. So watch out June. <laughs> that's all I can say. Uh, a couple of things I want to call your attention to. Uh, number one is our ministry involvement night tomorrow evening at 6 o'clock in our fellowship hall. It's $3 for those four years old, uh, over four years of age. And uh, you must sign up so we'll know how much food to eat. Or, I mean, food to buy. <laughs> you need to sign up so we don't have much food to uh, purchase and to prepare for and all of that. And if you come in and, uh, and, and, and you didn't pay and somebody eat, you know, paid comes in at the last minute and they go, what happened to the food? I mean, see that person right over there? They come in, they didn't pay, they didn't sign up, and they ate your food. Now, I'm going to get mine. I'm going to tell you that right now. So, but $3, if you will. Uh, we have, uh, in our ministry involvement time in March, we had a great success. We had a great turnout. Great folks have done a great job in, in keeping up with the ministries that they signed up for. I appreciate that. Uh, we've, we're going to add some this time, not only the ones that we do have, but we're going to add some, especially for the kids. Uh, we'll have some things for the, uh, for the smaller children to do and for the, uh, for the teenagers to do and things like that. So uh, last time we said, well, what can we do? Well, you can stand there and look pretty, or you can stand there and look handsome, or... Uh, you can open the door for uh, uh, somebody as they walk through it. And, uh, and certain people, you slam it when they walk through it. <laughs> Those are where they're playing the fiddle. Anyway, uh, not calling any names, but I'll give you his initials, Tim Ludicky, But <laughs> Anyway, oh, I'm sorry. I'm supposed to initials, not names. Uh, just help us with that. Also, uh, Father's Day is coming up on the 15th, and, uh, and that's uh, just two weeks away. And guys, y'all need to work because the, the ladies did a really good job. The ladies did a really good job. So I would enlist my wife to get busy on my behalf and, uh, and get those people that got, they got, came for Mother's Day back here for Father's Day. And uh, we'll recognize, of course, the oldest father, the youngest father, the father with the uh, most uh, family, friends, net relatives, enemies, whatever, who all you get here, as long as you get them before you enter the property. You know, once you drive onto the property, you cannot recruit. Okay, you can recruit. You can stand out there in the middle of Garth Road, wave traffic. Uh, you know, do whatever you want to. Invite them to come to church if they come, uh, and they're out there in the middle of Garth Road. You're fine. But once you enter on the property, it's over with. It's done. Okay, so you can't recruit once you get on the property. All right. Uh, this evening we have the privilege of having Brother uh, Tyrone Barfield with us, and uh, he is a church planner, as I told you this morning, uh, to Texarkana, Texas. And uh, we love church planners around here. We feel like that that's God's work. Uh, that's, that's, that's God's desire that we continue to build and, and start more churches because they're closing faster than we can start them. Right. And uh, so uh, I'm, I've asked him to come tonight. He had a cancellation, actually. He was with Brother Green this morning and called me and said, uh, uh, actually talked to my wife. He talked to the nice one. <laughs> and so uh, anyway, we scheduled him to come tonight, and uh, uh, he's going to come, Brother Go ahead and come, and he's going to share uh, his burden for uh, beginning a church plant there in Texarkana, Texas. And uh, once we finish with that with his presentation, then we'll uh, take up the offering. No one leaves. We're going to take up the offering, receive the offering, and then uh, uh, Brother uh, Barfield's going to preach for us. Brother. Amen. Thank you so much. Hey, man, I'm from Grace Independent Baptist Church in uh, Pine Bluff, Arkansas. Uh, well, I served at Grace Independent Baptist Church for 15 years. And uh, my presentation is pretty much going to tell my testimony, so I don't want to steal from my presentation. But I've been at Grace Independent Baptist Church uh, for 15 years and labored there in Pine Bluff, Arkansas. Uh, in my, this is not in my presentation, but my pastor came out of Crossroads Baptist Church in Northern Virginia. And uh, he came and started the Grace Independent Baptist Church there at Pine Bluff of August, October of 1985. And where I came, when I got saved in October, August of 1999, when the church was just about to celebrate it was the fourth year anniversary when I came a part of Grace Independent Baptist Church. And I want to introduce my family. 
most important outside of Jesus Christ is your family, man. I'm going to ask my family to stand up. And uh, my wife, Cindy, and my son, Caleb, he's nine years old. He got saved in 2009 and surrendered to preach in 2013 in May. And uh, my daughter, Sarah, and uh, she got saved on April this year. This, uh, she got saved on April 6th of 2014. Amen. Thank you so much. But this is my precious family. Uh, that We're going to start the Calvary Independent Baptist Church. We'll be moving. Uh, this December, uh, going down to Texas, County, beginning to prepare, we're going to start January the 7th, uh, 2015, start the Calvary Independent Baptist Church. Pray for us, pray for our safety on the road, and pray for me and my family that God b begin to work in those people there in Texas, County. Amen. Amen. Texarkana. We're Central Grace Independent Baptist Church, a local New Testament Independent Baptist Church in Pinebrook, Arkansas, that is under the leadership of Pastor Robert Hart. On August 19, 1999, at the age of 17, I accepted Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. God began to build my heart about preaching. On July 12, 2000, I surrendered to preach the gospel. In October 2001, God gave me a bird to start a local New Testament independent Baptist church in Texas, County. That same year, I met my wonderful wife, Cindy. We were married on March 9, 2002. God has blessed us with two precious children. Caleb accepted Christ as his personal Savior in 2009. He surrendered to preach on May 15, 2013. The Bible states in Mark 16, 15, Then he said unto them, Go ye to all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. We're going, we're going to Texas County. Texas County covers the border of two states, Texas and Arkansas, and the population of Texas County, Texas is about thirty six thousand, and the population of Texas County, Arkansas is about thirty thousand. Between the two that is sixty six thousand three hundred and thirty souls that can be reached for Christ. Reaching two states at one time is the same goal in Texas County that's twice as nine. There are also two smaller communities by Texas County, New Boston and West Village. That is about 10,000 more people that God has given my family the opportunity to share the gospel with. We have been blessed to go celebrating the land and learn more about Texas County and the people there. Every area in the United States has different people with different ways of life, different goals, and just different lifestyles all together. Going here is like going to a new world, a world where we'll know a few people. Everything is new to us and very new experience. On one of our most recent trips to Texas County, we're able to meet two individuals in particular that show us even more how crucial it is for us to get there. One lady had made a profession of faith, yet says she has no church home. We also had the opportunity to meet a young man named Charles when presented with the question, if he was to die today, would heaven be his home? His answer was no. After being showed the way that his answer could be yes, by the presentation of the gospel, Charles bowed and asked Christ to come into his heart. This is why we need to get there, because even in this world where hearts are quickly growing cold, there are still people seeking. You say, where are we going? What will we do when we get there? Will we go soul winning, baptizing new believers, training them to duplicate themselves, all alone, showing the true love of God through an example? Matthew 28, verse 19 and 20 states, Go ye therefore, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I commanded you and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. My heart desires to see men and women, boys and girls saved, baptized, and discipled in the word of God. 
My prayer is to see families serve the Lord together, to see men lead their families to Christ, to see God use my wife to train women and young ladies to be godly women serving the Lord and submitting to His will, to see men and boys called to preach and to train them and go out to start local New Testament, independent Baptist church around the world. Luke 10, 2 states, Therefore it said unto them, The harvest is truly great, but the labors are few. For ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he would send forth labors into his harvest. Pray that God will use us to send forth labors, so we are well equipped to spread his word and join us in our efforts to reach souls in Texarkana. We need your prayers. Pray for our Pray for the souls in Texarkana. That God will begin to work on their hearts that they might be open-minded to learn more about our Savior. Pray that we will see people's lives change in Jesus Christ. Acts 26, 18. To open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Will you pray for us to take the light to those in the darkness in Texarkana? Isaiah 6 8 says, Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Who shall I send? And who will go for us? Then said I, Who am I? Send me. We will go. Thank you. Turn to page number 20. Page number 20. Let's all stand. We'll ask the men come forward to see the offering on the last course. Page number 20. Christ our Redeemer died on the cross, died for the sinner, paid all his Crossroads Baptist Church in Virginia. That's where uh, Brother uh, uh, Kenny Baldwin is uh, the pastor now. And I said, well, I said, that's my son's like number up there. I said, I'm like on the list of 20 favorite preachers. And uh, Kenny Baldwin's up there along with Johnny, uh, uh, sorry, Dr. John Hamblin and, and a few of the others, Dr. Sam Davison and a few of the others, you know, and, and I'm like way down here. But he, he, he does come and listen to me preach once in a while, my son does, and I do appreciate that. But uh, uh, anyways, receive the offering this evening. I just remind you, it's for missions, and uh, we uh, uh, have, a, have a mandate uh, to go into all the world and preach the gospel. And as we preach the gospel, uh, we, in, in our own Jerusalem, in our own Samaria, we have to uh, get beyond the furthest areas also. 
uh, to the world, and we have missionaries. We can't all go, but we can send folks to go. Right. And if we go, we promise through Faith Promise Missions to give. And if you promise to give, just keep up giving, uh, and God will reward you abundantly. If you bow for prayer, uh, Brother uh, uh, Kyle, you lead us in prayer, please. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for uh, coming and joining us here in this wonderful house of yours, Lord. Uh, I pray that you'll move amongst us and move with us today as we listen to your word from a wonderful church planner, Lord. I know we don't have enough because more churches close before they can even open. Uh, I thank you for providing another servant of yours to uh, have a burden in his heart, Lord. Uh, yes. Lord, I pray that uh, you'll uh, bless this offering we're about to have, Lord. I know that uh, you own everything in this, this world. You've created everything, Lord. I know that you can take care of anything, and I pray that uh, you'll take care of the building fund, take care of the missionaries we uh, take care of, Lord, and please take care of us. I pray this in your holy name. Amen. 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 interesting as it gets, uh, but uh, I'm looking forward to uh, Brother Tyrone preaching to us this evening, and uh, you settle back, you open the Word of God, and uh, and listen to what he has to say. God provided a message for him for us tonight, and uh, we're excited about what he has to say. <coughs> Brother J.P. Suffering and shame And I love that old cross Where the dearest and best For a world of lost sinners was slain so I'll cherish the old rugged cross Till my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. Oh, that old rugged cross so despised by the world has a wondrous attraction to me. For the dear Lamb of God 
left his glory above to bear it to dark Calvary. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to that old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown to the old rugged cross I will ever be true its shame and reproach gladly bear then he'll call me someday to my home far away where his glory forever I'll share and I'll cherish that old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to that old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. Thank you. Hey, man, thank you so much, Garth Road Baptist Church. Garth Road Baptist Church, thank you so much. Thank you for that message, amen. Lay it down, amen. Lay it down to the end. But I thank you so much. It's good to be here. And, and I told you, Pastor, I thank you for the hotel that he put us in. And what a nice hotel. When we walked in, I said, wow, what amazing. <laughs> Amen. It's a blessing uh, that you all have a heart for the man of God to see uh, churches planted in America. And see not just see souls reach in America, but see reach all over the world for Jesus Christ. And, and uh, I just want to thank you. So much you pastor took me in at the last minute. And that's how I know he have a heart for men and see, want to see people saved and baptized and disciples. I, he has that pastor heart. When I called him, uh, what, two weeks ago? And uh, he said, come on. I mean, he didn't hesitate. Yeah, I guess he saw my plea. That <laughs> I guess he heard my burden in my voice that when I talked to his wife, she said, yes, he have a heart for, he have a heart for church planters. Amen. She was had nice compassion for us over the phone. She was nice to me. Uh, she had a great attitude, pleasant attitude to me over the phone. And just to know when mission when church planner missionaries make a phone call, you really crossing your fingers like, oh Lord, who I'm gonna get now? Because you just don't know the angry sometimes. It's sad to say, but you know sometimes we get some some amazing attitude towards us. the only thing we're trying to do is just trying to present the work and try to raise support and go try to do what God called us to do. But tonight, I'm going to give us something where America needs. Where America needs is missing tonight. And I thank you so much, church, and I thank you for allowing us to come. Thank you for your efforts of being a part of this church and uh, for your efforts come out tonight. You could be doing something else at the boat, at the lake, or doing anything. But you're in the house of God tonight to come hear the word of God. Come and hear a little old somebody like me to preach the word of God to you. Because I'm a nobody, but I'm somebody in God's eyes. Amen. <laughs> Hey man, I'm somebody in God's eyes. But tonight, I'm going to give us something where America misses today. That, that thing of love. And I think that's missing in the world today, in God's people. 
Take your Bibles to John chapter number 15. Go read verse number 9 to verse 9 through 12. Now, I think America missing it today, missing this today, and God give a clear presentation of example about Christians loving one another. I think that's a bad word when it comes to loving one another. God's people say it with me, loving one another. Say it with me one time, loving one another. Amen. We need to remember that when we're going through our most difficult time with each other. And at the most difficult time, I think the most people that devil try to attack is the husband and wife. If I can get a shout and amen, amen. And I think that's the most difficult thing that the devil is tearing apart homes, marriages, church members, relationship with each other, with church members, trying to circulate, but the devil try to stop us, but he can't stop God's work, amen. amen. Verse number 9 through 12. The Bible said in uh, John chapter number 15, the gospel of John chapter 9, verse number 9, verse through 12. The Bible said, the Father have loved me, so have I love you. Continue in me and my love. Talking about Jesus Christ. If ye be my, he said, if you keep my commandments, you shall abide in me, my love. Even as I have kept my Father's commandment, abide in me and his love. These things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Great, I'm sorry, I'm going to start right there. As I have loved you. Verse number 12. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for opportunity. God, tonight, and I thank you for Christ showing the better example that anybody, God, that laid down his life for his friends, talking about the brothers and sisters in Christ, for the whole world to see people Come and get saved. Receive the gospel, God. I pray, God, help us to be encouraged tonight, including myself, as I preach the word of God. Help me to be encouraged to love people, love my brothers and sisters in Christ, even love my enemies, God. And God, I just pray you bless. Christ, we pray. Amen. If you look in the chapter, chapter number 15, Jesus talking about an example, talking about love. Say, I am my father. He's speaking of love and talking about he's commanding us that God's people love each other. And the thing is, God's people, what Christ is talking about, talking about love, love one another. He's talking about love each other. Let's look at verse number, verse number one here, and uh, uh, chapter number fifteen. Look at this. This is, I'm going up the chapter a little bit. He's talking about he's the true vine. He said, "I'm the true vine. My Father is the husband." He said, "Every branch in me that bear not fruit, he take it away, and every branch that bear fruit, he purge it, that it may bring forth more fruit." Look at verse number. 12. He said, this is my commandment, that you love one another. I have loved you. Now you go back to chapter, uh, uh, verse number uh, 1 and 2. Hey, he is the true vine, and we are the branches. And one thing he wants us to do, he wants us to love each other, to have the true vine of Jesus Christ here, to put Jesus in our heart, to care. He already lived with us, if you say. The Holy Spirit already been dwelling in you. The thing is, he wants to live for him. He going to purge us. He going to do some things that you don't like. Oh, what's so-and-so going to think? God don't even care. He want to purge you. He want to get that line off you. He want to get that hatred. He want to get that bitterness. He want to get that envy. He want to get that loss. He want to get everything off you because he wants you to love him for us to love each other. Amen. The problem is God's people. We got too many hypocrisy people in the world today. They say I'm independent Baptist. Yes, I'm independent Baptist, but what you doing with it? What is Jesus Christ said? Stand up and preach the gospel. I got the men, pastors in the pulpit trying to take my head off. I'm like, what in the world? Did you just read that scripture just like I did? He commanded us to love who? One another. And say, I hate one another. But if you look in the chapter, early in the chapter, you live in him, he go pray to you. Do his commandments. He said, hey, he's the true vine. The Father, talking about God, the Father, Jehovah God. He's the husband. Hey, he's the, Jesus Christ is the true vine. He said, I laid down, if you look in that chapter, I laid down my life for my friends. He said, hey, you're not my servant because the servant don't know what my father do. My servant passed the message to me and I give it to you so you can learn how to love, love each other. My command is to love one another. Yeah. And when he come in and purges, he didn't tell you how he's going to purge it. He's going to purge it. You know what the word said? You got a lust problem? He's going to deal with you about it. 
You got an anger problem? He's going to deal with your body. You got a lying problem? He's going to deal with your body. You got an even, wicked attitude problem? He's going to deal with your body. He's going to deal with your conversation, be not deceived, evil communication, corrupt good manner. He's going to deal with your body. If you got a heart problem, he's going to deal with your body. You got an eye problem, he's going to deal with your body. If you got a testimony problem, he's going to deal with you. Because he's going to purge, he wants to live for us. He wants you to hang around the right people. Because the Bible said, Proverbs 13, verse 20, he that walk a wise man should be wise, but a companion fool, he shall be destroyed. He's going to put you around people that love. Oh, people don't preach on love anymore. Oh, no. I want to preach on tell you how you need to do, what you need to do. Well, are you delivering the love, people? Love. We're going to text the counter to, pe- to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. When I went to the hospital on Friday, one of my brother in house, we was down in Pine Bluff. My brother asked me to go to the hospital with him. When he told me what the problem was, was his uncle was sick. And I said, okay, I know. In my mind, I already knew what was going on. His uncle's lost. We walk in the hospital, people. We walk in the hospital. I see him laying on the bed. See his mother, I mean his wife, his daughter, they sitting on the bed. And by the way, my brother don't mind me telling me, matter of fact, he want me to tell you this. And I look at him, my heart begins to for his for his soul. Because I have a love for people. Not just a, I, no, I have a love for God because God has love for people because I love God. He loved, he loved people and I love people. And I see him laying on that bed and I see his wife, they about to go. They real hungry, they ready to go, so I didn't want to push the issue with them. Because the Bible said, be wise as a serpent, serpent and humble as a dove. So I have to be wise in the situation. Just don't push them. So as soon as they walk out, I go sit on the bed and sit down. And I asked him, I said, I forgot his name already. I said, let me ask you something. Are you saved? He said, well, I hope. I think. And when he said, I think, he said, I said, uh-oh, I got him right there. And I asked him, I said, the Bible said, Romans 3.10, as it's written, there is none righteous, no, not one. I said, nobody is perfect. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, the Trinity are one. They are perfect. I said, number one, you are a sinner. I said, number two, it's a penalty for that sin. I said, he said in Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Then he come back in Romans 6.23. He said, for the wages of sin is death. But that death part is talking about hell. Will you reject Jesus Christ? So that's where the penalty comes from. Now I come with number three and say, I'm glad you asked. Romans, uh, Romans 6 and 3 on the latter part of it. He said, but the gift of God, guess what? Is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now, number one, he realized he was a sinner just that quick. I mean, he was sinning. Number two, he realized I was a, it's a penalty for sin because of the rejection of Christ. Number three, he realized that it's hope in who? Can anybody tell me? Jesus Christ. In Romans 10, 9, they said that if thou shalt confess in thy mouth in the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in the heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Now, number four, he realized I'm a sinner. It's a penalty for sin. Now, it's hope in Jesus Christ. You telling me this man really to, to, to lose his life for the world could be saved to show the gospel? What kind of love is that? Yes, Christ, he died and buried his son. God died, God the Father buried his son, Jesus, for you and I can experience eternal life in heaven. And that man realized he was lost on his way to hell and got saved because why? The love of God. Because why? He loved one another. He got saved this past Friday. And I experienced some things of some mean Christians. And I said, God, help me not to be that way. Help me not to have that attitude. But I'm going to help you in a little bit about how he's the true vine. He wants us. But if you don't follow me, you know what's going to happen? The Bible says that you are worthy away. And men are going to pick up the branches and throw them in the fire. You, you know what that's talking about? You're going to be a Christian. Now I'm talking about the pits of hell. Talking about out there in the world. So when you get cast into them, when men pick them branches, you know how men, people got leaves and take them branches and cut the, the limbs off and 
and then limbs that fell in the yard said, I'm tired of looking at this limb. Let's get all this up. And they throw them in the fall here. Boom! You know what that is? That's their Christian that straight away from God. That's what they're talking about. You agree, you, you straight away from God. You got away. So now when you cast, when somebody pick you up, now you have to fellowship with God now. So how in the world are you going to learn to love one another? I'm going to give you three points real quick to how to love one another. The world is tired of phony Christians. Every time we go, every time we're in a place, every time I'm somewhere, I had a boss that say he's a preacher. Now he gets fired. My boss get fired, seven eight thousand dollars. Say I'm a preacher, working all over the company. Company worshipped him, let him do all those things. Now he get caught on the internet. I'm a preacher, huh? And the girl saved everything he did, all his texts and all his emails. And you know what happened? I talked to him Thursday night, that Thursday night. You know what happened to him? He was forced to resign. Now, we're going through my mind. They go another preacher, and the guy came to me. He said, Tyrone, that's what I'm talking about. He came on talking about that guy stuff. And look what he's doing. He running around chasing women. So how? You say you love God, and you talking about telling us to get right, telling people in your job to get right, and you're not doing it. Basically, what I'm saying is, Christian, you telling everybody else to love, and you're not loving you not get purged the right. Hey, you avoiding the purging, so you want to run from God. Say, I'm not worried about the purging. God trying to deal with you, and you started running. So what I'm saying is that just love God, love God's people, love God's man. Stop going up against God, man. Love your pastor. Love his wife. Don't go up against your pastor and wife. If you don't like it, ask God about it. Don't tell your church member about it. Don't tell the deacon. Don't tell the outside world. Just love them. Have God command us to love one another. Too many, we got too many church members going up against the man of God. Instead of loving you, man, pastor, and appreciate what he's doing and understanding what he's doing. If you don't like it, take to God and ask God to deal with it. And just love them. Problem is, we got too many backstabbing, what they call it, backstab, backbiting. I heard so many things around to backstab, backbiting. So much stuff going on, backbiting. Instead of loving, trying to tear God's man down. Trying to tell, hey, you know what? His wife is important too. Where's she at? Is she back there? Hey, man. Hey, she's important too, people. You take care of your, you take care of your pastor. You take care of your pastor's wife. Because he bring the word of God. I preach this morning. Because he bring the word of God. God have called him to God Road Baptist Church. To, to, to be your overseer, To be your shepherd. And Christ is the head of the church. When I go start the Calvary Independent Baptist Church. It's not my church. I'm just going to be a mouthpiece for him. I'm just going to be the shepherd. Can I get a holiday man? Amen. Hey. We need to be. People need to wake up. We got too many divisions going in the church. Because we missed this passage. We missed this part. We'll read this. Look, look at verse number 12. We'll, we'll read this. This is my commandment that we love one another as I love you. We'll read that and stop. Then we'll read verse number 13. Look at this. Greater love had no man than this, that a man laid down his life for his friend. You are my friends. And if ye do whatsoever I command you, hit. Henceforth, I call you not servants, but for the servant, nor not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends. For all things I have heard of my father, I made known unto you. Well, you know, I never heard that in the Bible. I never heard that. Yeah, you heard it. You read it. You just skipped that part. Say you love one another, but you skipped the part that he laid down his life for you. You skipped the part that he commanded to love you. You skipped the commandment, oh, we love one another. Oh, you forget the commandment part, oh, love. No, command to love one another. Command to love the pastor. Command to love the church member. To command to love your spouse. Oh, wife, command to love your husband through the most difficult time. To love, have compassion. I heard stories that pastors, that women made demonstrations. Uh, to, they made examples of God's loving people, compassion. 
Number one, God command that we love one another. Look at verse number 12, and then we're going to look at 1 Peter 3. This is my, it said, this is my commandment that we love one another as I have loved who? You. Take your Bible to 1 Peter 3, 8. 1 Peter 3, just a few moments here. I just want to be an encouragement to us tonight that we could, if we could just stop being busy about it, if we spend so much energy being busy about it, if we took the energy being busy about it and take the energy and practice love, well, just for a second, we'll be some dangerous Christians, won't we? And get mad at the pastor and say, well, you hit that, you, you must have been in my business because when you preach, I just talked to you, I ain't like what you said, and your pastor prepared this message about a month ago. Now you're mad at the pastor because he preached it on, because you're in sin. If you're in sin, just get, uh, get up and get it right. Amen. Stop getting mad at the pastor. It ain't the pastor's fault. It's your fault. You're not loving. You're not showing compassion. You're showing envy. You've been hateful. You've been despiteful. You've been unruly. You've been disobedient. So you got more, a lot of grown people, so childish than kids, telling their, to, their children to sit down. You need to sit down. Problem is, you got well, grown folks being busy about trying to tell their kids what to do. No, you need to get right. Well, you need to love your brother. No, you need to love your brother, sister in Christ because you're not doing what you're telling your children to do. People don't like that preacher. I know it. I know it. 3 8. 1 Peter 3 8. Then I say 1 Peter, yeah, 1 Peter 3 8. The Bible said in verse 9, he said, Finally, be, your, be ye all of one mind, having compassion, who one another love as brethren. Be pitiful and courageous. But let me just say this. What did it say? Let's go back to that first part I want you to hear. Finally, be ye all of what? One mind. Having what? Compassion one of another. Look at that part. Love as brethren. That's the part I want you to see. Love as brethren. Let me get an example. Come here, Caleb. We got another kid. Come here, Sarah. I'm going to get my children. Use them as an example. Now, I'm talking to Sarah. Over here. Come on, baby. I'm talking to Sarah over here. Me and Sarah was talking. Well, Sarah, first of all, you know, I don't like Caleb because I ain't like what he did, and he said this about me. I just don't like that. What you think about that? And then Sarah, get her input. Then what they do, come over here. Well, you know, I don't like Sarah because what she did to me because she said this about me. What you, what's your input? Say thank you. In the same time, what is that? Backbiting. Is that showing love? Thank you, sir, babe. I'm sorry. Is that showing love? And the first thing they do, go home and talk about how God's not using them. Cause because the adventure is going to get around that you are a busybody. And nobody wants to be around you. And you go home crying to your family. Well, that church up there, God wrote back church. They don't talk to me and do nothing. And you get that person all angry because they don't see the situation, what you're doing. They don't see what you're doing. Have that person come up here, go off on the palace and everybody else. And then once they get the real truth, now you over there apologize. Now you drug everybody else in it. Now you got a conflict in the church now because they didn't grab this side, they didn't grab this side. Now these two sides at each other's throat. But they had this person being foolish of what they've been doing the whole time. Or they'll come with another church member. Come here, let me use you. Let me use you. And don't forget to my point. Are you, I talked to this church member about the pastor. The same thing when I did to my, my uh, children. Well, you know what? I, don't, I just do not like the pastor because he's just thinking all that. I always preach and tell about somebody need to get right. He know he need the one you need to get right. What you think about? It? What's your input? And then his wife, I just don't like her. What do you think? Then this man get his input on about the pastor. Now, he filled his ears a bunch of junk. Comes over here and say the same exact thing I said over here. Again, you fail to love one another. Thank you, man. You fail to love one another. If we're going to reach Bay Town, Texas for Christ in the world for Jesus Christ. We got to get our attitude, our mind, our thoughts, our, first of all, our heart on him. 
Because when we're going up against the man of God and his wife, people, you're going to fail every single time. Because you know what God's going to do to you? Eventually, if you don't eventually get it right, boop, next, boop, next. Hey, this is a freight train, people. God don't need you. I mean, I mean, God needs you, but don't think you, well, I need it because if that day don't go home, the church is going to fall because I picked good money. And I, hey, what? You know what? God will take that money from me and give it to somebody else, and you'll be the main one calling the church, So I need help. I'm hungry. My house is up, up, and my house is about to get repossessed. My car, my bank run. Can you help me, church? And you're the main one causing problems. You're causing conflict. You causing the, the, uh, a confusion, division in the local church. What God's trying to do down the house, these sinners get saved, see lives get changed, and you causing conflict. Just get it right. Get your heart right. Love one another. Get behind your pastor. Get behind them and love your pastor and wife. Because we've got too many churches shutting down because of church members and causing division. When is division going to stop? When you get it right. And Pastor, stand strong, keep standing in there. Pastor, why keep having that compassion? When I called on the phone, she had the most pleasant attitude. She's in my top five phone calls. Because you know why? In some churches, I told my wife, I'm going to be honest. One church that we went to, I said, if that pastor called me about supporting him, tell me he can keep it. You know why? Because he think we need him. No, we need God because he's the head of the church. That is not your money. The money that God gave me and my family, that's not our money. That car we got out there, it's not our car. It's God's. It's nothing belongs to us. He just let us borrow it, people. So when I see somebody going through something, or my wife, my wife knew somebody was going through something. My wife came to me about it. I said, let's do Let's Let's help them. We don't have much money. Well, I mean, we don't have money like that. But the heart of my wife loves God's people. When she see them going through something, guess what? She she react right away. We were standing there talking. My, so my wife got in the car. She said, I want to do this. You know what that come from? That scripture, people. That scripture. Not me. I ain't did anything because you come from me. She's been took a long time, 12 years ago. That's how long we've been married. She would have been left. But what I'm saying is that we need to love each other as Christ loved the local church. Husband, love your wife as Christ loved the church. People, he's the head, not the pastor. He's, the, he's just using him to be a pastor of his church. Support him, love him. You know what? You know, I don't know if you don't. I don't know what y'all do. Matter of fact, your pastor ain't talk to me. I ain't really talking to him really about the church. Nothing. He'll, matter of fact, no pastor really talk to me about their church. I'm going to say this. You know, what about birthdays? Anniversaries. Huh? He said, Pastor, my birthday. They birthdays, they married anniversary. Hey, well, hey, give them a gift. Give them a little love offering. Take care of the wife for the anniversary. She gets sick, give her a gift basket. Give it to her. Don't do it for another church. Oh, well, Miss, uh, Miss Lamb, I just want to give you this in front of the whole church. No, stop that. You just want recognition. And you be the main one dogging them. Go to their house, drive your car like you drove to the church, and say, we want to be a blessing. It's between me and you, Pastor and Pastor White. Birthdays, anniversaries. What else do we have? His birthday and her birthday, anniversaries. Just love it. It's just taking another step, people. Well, I don't have any money. Well, you bought so-and-so some over here. You got something. When your pastor poured out tears and came up there losing sleep at the hospital and there for you, he could sacrifice, but why you can't sacrifice? Uh, for the other church members, vice versa. Love each other. A church member go down, you know what? It don't hurt for you packing your car and your family. It don't take the pastor, well, let's call the pastor. He goes, no, you a church member. You go over there. Amen. You show love. He said love one another because you know why? Jesus will do it. You got many examples in the Bible. Huh? The Pharisees said he tried to, he tried, they, they, they tried to discredit him because he was healing people, right? 
The lady that was, had a sickness problem for 18 years bent over, took care of her, didn't he? The man can see, took care of him, then he got saved too, didn't he? Told them, hey, I don't know who he is, but I know he's Jesus, and he, and he stood for Christ. The blind man was being ridiculed. He said, I don't know, but his name is Jesus. His parents turned against God. They didn't say they won't know God because the decree there in the synagogue, you knew God had cast you out. And they cast him out and he got saved because of his love for God. What about you? We got too many churches falling. Too many closing their doors, people. I've been serving the grace for 15, 14 years there. Been part of 15 years because I'm still part of Grace Independent Baptist Church until we get organized. <clears throat> number two, God showed the greater love. Verse number 13 and 14, back in John. John 15. He showed the greater love. 13 and 14. Greater love have no man than this, that a man laid down his life for his friends. You are my friends. And you do whatsoever I command you. People, he's laid down his life for us in the whole world. If we just lay down our life and give it to him, stop causing conflict. Stop trying to come in here and find fault. Because you're going to find something. Because we, we're not perfect, people. You, I'm guaranteeing you look at me long enough, you're going to find something. I'm, I, I'm just being myself. You're going to find something, so stop walking to church trying to find where the door not right, where the bath, that tissue not over there, where this, they, this, this part, little length under the chair, they ain't get that part. Stop that. Then stop being childish and just grow up. Just, just stop that. Stop being like your children age. You are adult. Just love. God has chosen, number three, God has chosen you to bring forth fruit. Verse number 16 and 17. You have not chosen me, but look at this. But I have what? Chosen you. And ordain you that ye should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name may give it to you. I mean, get, I'm sorry, he may give it you. Verse number 17. These things, as I command you, let's hear it again, that you what? Love what? One another. Boy, <laughs> this sort of thing, he got to tell us thing twice. <laughs> hey, I'm going to remind you of privilege. I'm going to come back in that chapter and remind you again. People, let's love each other. Respect the man of God. Respect his wife. Respect each other. You know why I'm saying the man of God? Because that's what church members mostly want to target the pastor. Because he's the easy target. Because he's the easy to target and say, well, I'm going to get the pastor. I know I can make him feel bad here, blah, blah, blah. No, you know what? God go deal with you. He that walk with wise man, she be wise, but a companion foolish shall be destroyed. Be not deceived. Evil communication. 1 Corinthians 15, verse number 33. Be not deceived. Evil communication corrupt good manners. Husbands, love your wife. Husbands, love your wife as Christ loved the church. Be not wise in our own eyes to depart from evil. Proverbs chapter 3, he said, lean not to our own understanding, but acknowledge him. He shall what? Direct thy fire. path. Be not wise in our own eyes, what? And what? Depart what? From evil. Have they which love thy law, and what? Nothing. Shall what? Defend thee. Say it with me. If they, say, if they have loved thy law, and what? And nothing shall defend what? Thee. People, if we get to that point, I'm not all the way there yet because still, people still offend me. People still do things. I still talk to my wife about it. When you stop talking to your spouse about it, talk to your church member about it, you're not offended. And the reason why I'm saying the pastor and his wife, the pastor is the head of this, he, he's, the, he's the pastor of this church. And the devil want to take him out, people, to take this church off this block. And there's one less church to share people of the gospel. To see missionaries come through, to go across the world and see people say, not only that, to see you in this local church here, seeing people's lives change. What have you caused the problem? Remember, you can't stop God's business, but still, the devil's real too. You come here and cause conflict. Now, I've been to churches, 
have church members have took folks out, took 20 people with them, took five, wiped the church out. But the church still moving because you can't stop God. Yeah. Them just the people that were foolish enough to listen to that and go against their pastor and pastor wife. That's why I say love. Show compassion. Long suffering. You know, the, oh man, we were out at long suffering. You know, Brother Bart, yeah. let, let's say that some other time because tonight I'm just not really here that long suffering. Long suffering people. We have long suffering right here. And depart from evil. Be not wise in our own eyes and what? Depart from evil. You know what, men and women? I would set no wicked things before my eyes. I hate the work of them that I should, I should turn aside. That's in uh, Psalms chapter 101, verse 3. If I miss the word, look at it. <laughs> but you know what? Let's love each other. Let's show compassion. Let's drive. Let's fight. When me and my wife got married, I was excited when we got married. Standing there before my pastor, happy, ready, crying. That's the love we need to have for God. Anxious to want to meet with him. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for the opportunity. God, just pray you be with us, God. Lead and guide and direct us. God, pray for God to roll Baptist church. I pray you be with them. I pray you lead and guide them. Pray God be with the pastor and his wife. Be with the church members. God, pray you direct them, God. And God, just pray you just lead and guide their lives, God. Help them to focus. And realize, God, who's the true vine. God, pray, help them to get in there, Father, and love one another. Father, I pray you bless. Christ, we pray.